Good morning. Good I'm morning. so glad to have you here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Phoenix Rising. And my guest today is Jason Galka. And Jason had me on The Jason Galka Show. I don't even know how many years ago. We won't mention the years. Oh, my gosh. What was it like? <laughs> Maybe 1995? Something. 1995, I was I was in fifth grade, so it couldn't be that no, far back. No, we're not going back there. But it was it really was a quite a long time ago. It was ago. around 2012. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's when, yeah. Um, you know, it it was sort of the reboot of of my show because I had done the Jason show back when I was in high school, which right 1999 was when we officially launched at the Cablevision building in Riverhead. Right. Um, and I did that for a number of years, about four years. And then I did a reboot in 2012, and yeah. we have a lot of mutual friends, which is how we came how into we came. contact. And I remember the very first show I did with you, I did not have a show yet. I hadn't met um, Lorraine Recchia at this point, oh. because she and Lee Moorhead, our Lee in heaven now, they're the ones that, that pushed me and contacted Cablevision. And right after I was on your show, and then I was on Lorraine's show, I got a notice, a postcard in the mail saying you you have a show, you know, Monday mornings at 10 o'clock live on Cablevision. And I thought I was just going to pass out of the mailbox. Who did that? They all did you that. You did. Yeah, yes. it, yeah, it and was you made amazing. It and so when you invited me on, you invited me on. We talked about ear candling. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a guest there that has a very strong personality. She's also watching Dan on us now. That's our friend Janet. And I, yes, and I was intimidated. I said, I, I don't know how this is going to go. And you said, I got it. And you were just, <laughs> and you are just so smooth about it. Thank you. you know, how you integrated everything and you gave everyone the chance to talk about what they do and the gifts that they have. And... It was just awesome. It was the time yeah. of my life. It was definitely one of the best shows. Um, and, and again, we're going back to 2012 when right. we did our live show. Um, you did a show on grief and forgiveness. I remember yes. that. You were on my show a couple of times, yes. actually. You had interviewed a woman that um, someone, it was on the Southern State or the Expressway, someone dropped a frozen turkey from the overpass. Uh, Victoria Ravolo. Oh, and crashed into her windshield. I don't know how many surgeries this poor woman. And she you ended up had, passing away several years ago. She, yeah. And you had the blessing of interviewing her. And, yes. and she was able to forgive who, who did that She was. Um, well, it, it was more of a privilege to interview her, really. Yeah. Um, I, I followed the story, as many probably did, because it was a Long Island story. It was right. very local. I, I believe she lived in the Ronkonkoma area when this happened. And it was a group of young teens. You know, many people watching probably remember the story. You could certainly Google it, thanks yeah. to Google. Um, but but something, that's, something like that that so many of us would probably hold this animosity and hold all this anger. She was quick to forgive and, and she wrote an entire book about it. I forget what the name of the book is called, but the lady's name is Victoria Ruvolo. So anybody could look it up and you can certainly purchase the book. Um, it, it's very inspiring. She had a yes. really inspiring story to look at her. Um, and I believe my YouTube channel is still alive. So I was going to ask you, yeah. where can people see your old shows? You can see the old shows on the YouTube, on YouTube, Jason Galka or the Jason Galka them show. Old archive, archive shows. Archive shows. Archive shows. <laughs> um, so just go onto YouTube. You can put my name in there. You'll probably find them. And I believe that episode is still on. We never took anything down when the show ended. Right. We just left it. Um, but you'll see after all the surgeries, there was no scars or anything. She had a phenomenal phenomenal team of doctors that worked on yeah. her. And it was very sad when I read that she had passed away. We became Facebook friends after she did my show, so we yeah. stayed in touch. Um, yeah. And when I saw it, it saddened me. She was really, really She was sweet. a good soul, and she, she taught us so much yes. about forgiveness and letting go. Yes. You know, when, when someone will come to me, you know, or just in conversation, and, you know, they talk about their anger and the animosity they, they have mm -hmm. for someone. And I'll just you know, say it as nicely as I can. They're living in your head run free. That other person is going about their life, doing what they do, good, bad, or indifferent. Absolutely. And you're dwelling on them and you're feeding this energy. And when you do that, you are you become a magnet and you're attracting 
more of that. It's like people will say, why do I keep having the same relationship in it with a different person? The same type of personality always comes mm -hmm. to me. I have bad luck. No. no. That's what you're putting out there, that that's what you want. Correct. Because maybe you're comfortable being uncomfortable. And so, and it saddens me that some people are, and, and you can't expect change without change, if that mm. makes sense. So, you know, it, it's sort of like the circle of insanity. Mm. You, know, you keep going around and around, but you're not changing anything, so it just keeps happening and happening. So again, you know, change with change. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, I've had my own share of experiences of life experiences. Things were not always as wonderful and terrific as they are today, but I feel that it, it definitely helped me grow into the person I am today. I feel much more as an adult today at, you know, almost 40. I will be 40 this year. I can say it. I'm proud of it. <laughs> um, you know, Many don't get there. No. Mm. And, and I definitely feel, um, more grown up as I approach 40 than I did in my late 20s and even early 30s. More blossomed. More blossomed, yes, that's the term. Yeah, but, um, it's, it's You amazing. know, when we met back in 2012, it was the reboot of my show. Yeah. And my show was always taped. I never did what you did with live. I mean, I, I've done it. <laughs> I, I love live. I wish we could do live here at LTV. Live and, was so much fun. And yeah. Well, go ahead, you finish and then well, I'll tell a few live stories. Well, I was just going to compliment you how, um, you know, how smooth you are with your introduction. I mean, it used to take me, you know, three, four times to do my intro, which was, thank goodness that we taped my show. <laughs> um, but that one day that it was myself, you, and, and you were sitting to my left at that time also, yeah. um, it was Lorraine and Janet, Janet Russell, mm -hmm. um, who's no longer with us either. But we had a great panel show. My show back then was only 30 minutes. So yeah. we did kind of have to move quick and talk about what everybody did in their specialties. And we took a lot of phone calls. I mean, that was my first ever live show. I thought it was, it was the time of my life that day. That was so much fun. Um, we got a lot of phone calls. We, we talked about what everybody does. And, and it was really a lot of fun. And then, boom, your show came out. And, and there it was. And I, was, I remember how intimidated I was. Because when Lorraine interviewed me, um, it was a Tuesday, a Monday or a Tuesday night in Riverhead in the winter. And I didn't realize at that time, going back to antique equipment, like we were talking about with the guys <laughs> earlier, um, how hot the lights were. Yes. So I wore a turtleneck, a blazer, a scarf, and I'm under the lights and I'm like, Melting. I think I'm going to just pass out here. But um, Lee had suggested, probably to you also, because I know she suggested to Lorraine, mm -hmm. she said, you have to interview this woman. And I didn't know she was following my life path. Same thing with Ron Boyd, who is my angel in heaven. Uh, Ron did a reading for me so many years ago, because he's, he's gone quite a few years now. And he was a guidance counselor and teacher in Riverhead School District. Everyone loved Mr. Boyd, Ron Boyd. Yeah. The, the kids would go into um, detention on purpose just to be with him because he was kind. He was a really amazing father image. Yeah. So when you had a reading with him, you had to be referred by someone. He wouldn't take people off the street. Okay. And the first time he read me, he held this ring, my lion's head in his hand. And he said, I, just, I don't want you to tell me anything about you. And he started, he, you could see he went right into a trance and he was telling me things. He said, I see you in pink on the beach dancing. That sounds like you. <laughs> yeah, and I had just come back maybe a month earlier from Florida, visiting my mother. She was down there for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. I had gone with her to a store and I bought what pink is really not me, but it was such a cuddly thing, a pink sweatsuit thing and after being at the beach all day went back to her cottage showered put this pink thing on and went to the beach by myself and i was dancing wow which was it was just amazing amazing yeah. and so this goes back a long time ago because this was before scott okay wow. really long time ago and uh the things he said to me were they they had me speechless, which we all know that's really hard to come by. Yeah. And um, he didn't see me married. He didn't see me working. And I was fired the next work day. Didn't see me oh, <laughs> working. Didn't, didn't see me married. That 
that's done, not married anymore. And he told me how my life was going to blossom. And it was, it was almost hard to believe until he started speaking to me in Yiddish. Okay. And he was channeling my maternal grandmother. Oh, wow. Which, when you look at me, you have no idea what I am. Most people yeah. think I'm Italian Catholic. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I started to cry, and he was so sweet. He jumped up, and he said, he came out of the trance. He said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I said, no, I'm crying. Good tears. This is my grandmother calling me the the loving nicknames that she used to call me. I have goosebumps again. Yeah, this confirmation. He had, he had absolutely no way of knowing these things. So through that and through Lee, um, Lee had said to Lorraine, um, I'd like Phoenix to host Psychic Perceptions. And it was like, oh, no, no, no. no that, <laughs> those are big she, shoes to fill. Those are very big shoes to fill. You absolutely And, uh, yeah, Lee was always known as the psychic of the Hamptons. Yeah. Uh, she was in all the parades on the back yeah. of the convertible. <laughs> she was uh, a force to be reckoned with. Yes. And she was she was my heart. Yeah. So I said, I, 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 I can't. I just... It's such an honor to even be asked when there are so many others I feel that were so much more qualified than I. So I did it once, mm -hmm. and I had um, two friends on, um, uh, Tina Folks and her husband, Brian. They're artists. And again, it was a half-hour show, and I thanked God it was a half-hour <laughs> show. I wanted a 10-minute show. So we talked about art because I had, I had no idea. And then afterwards, it was like, that really wasn't bad. Maybe yeah. I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then with you really like easing me into it, you I have to thank you so much. You oh. really made it so so easy and so much fun for me. Oh, well, you know. I, I wish I could say my pleasure, but honestly, you had it in you. You just needed help bringing it out. Like, which you did. <laughs> you pushed, somebody pulled, whatever it was. Yes, you just needed to so, get it out, and you did. And, and here you are, and you have this beautiful studio now. I mean, this is a far cry gorgeous. from our, our other studio that we used to film Yeah, we don't want to talk about that primarily. <laughs> but we have a lot so, of good memories there. Yes. There was a lot of So good when I met you mm -hmm. back 2012, around there, you were a CPA at the time? Yes, I've always been an accountant um, since I was 20. I just fell into numbers. My, one of my first jobs at 15 was working in a bank as a teller. Okay. Um, and then it just, and meanwhile, I was terrible at math in, in school. I, I couldn't pass math to save my life. I needed a math tutor. <laughs> I, I, I really did. I, I'm just, I did. I get very flustered. If mm -hmm. you give me a test, especially anything mathematical, yeah. I don't even give myself a chance because I freeze up. Yeah. But questions, sure. because I know your some of your gifts that we're going to let the viewers learn. So being so bad traditionally in the physical mm -hmm. with math, because you are an intuitive, you do have psychic abilities. Do you feel your guides came through and helped you with that? 100%. Okay. 100%. I really, um, and this goes back to our, our friends Lee Moorhead and, and Lorraine and even Janet Russell. Um Lorraine is an angel card. Yes, for Lorraine those of you. Yeah, So she's watching. Hi, Lorraine. Yes, we love you um, and we miss you. Yes. Um, you know, that day that we did the live show all together, I, I really feel that that was kind of a turning point with, you know, my gift that, that you know. Because I think I Janet it. called you out on she some did. things. She did. Sometimes we just need that one person to help us and pull it out. Uh, but I always follow paranormal. I always follow, you know, psychic mediums. And I was always interested in, like, the afterlife. And I really became more interested in it after my grandparents had passed away because I was very close with them mm. um, from my mother's side. So, you know, I, I used to go with Janet to some of her, you know, Events, expeditions yeah. and, and her readings that she did for people. And, and it was a whole thing as well. I mean, that could have been on TV with the gear that she would get. And, and it, it's, yeah. you can't explain it. And that was actually the name of her show, Beyond the Unexplained. You really can't explain it until you experience it. Because she had her experience where she was abducted once or twice mm -hmm. by other beings from other other life planets. Yes, and, and that's the way she told it. Right. Um, it. It's probably very unbelievable to many people. Right. 
But, it's not my experience. Right, I can't it's not my say yay or nay. I can't, correct. I can't either. But if that's what she experienced, then, mm. you know, we all have whatever it is that... But um, that definitely helped put me on the path to pursue it even further. And then I just started becoming... Embracing it more, I guess you could say. It was yeah. even more intuitive. And, and sometimes I feel like I can visualize something before it actually happens or I feel like I've been someplace like a deja vu mm -hmm. um, it wasn't always like that but yeah and I've been reading more books on it that you know I surround myself with people like yourself that help with this gift and, and that's helped as well yeah and Lorraine Lorraine was very funny because my very first show at a Phoenix Rising it was done upstairs in uh, cable vision mm -hmm. And you can't, you couldn't call it a dungeon because it was upstairs, yeah. but it was ancient equipment is, is putting it very <laughs> mildly. But what was really nice is we had a wall of windows. Yes. And whenever Janet especially was on the show, there were little birds. There was no, nothing for them to hold on to, but they would hover at the window when we were talking about spirit and they would be tapping on the window. Just amazing, like validations. When yeah. Joe Giaquinto would be on with me, Scott would knock on the roof. Oh, I love it. And <laughs> without fail, Joe's coming on within five, six minutes after the intro. There's Scott banging or, or oh. answering something. Yeah. Even without a Ouija board or cards or anything, if we pay attention, we're getting messages yes. all the time. So my first guest, uh, as I keep segueing in and out of stuff, probably okay. making everyone dizzy, um, <laughs> Lorraine Recky was my first guest. And I said, I don't know exactly what I said, but she's so straightforward that such a darling person yes. and no nonsense. And I, don't, I think it was about this dog that I had done a reading for Totally Unexpected. And she looked at me and she said, when are you going to come out of the closet with your gifts? And I really, I, I wasn't comprehending what she was saying. She said, you don't just read animals, Phoenix. This is, a, this is an energy. You're reading whatever body they're in. It could be human. It could be cat, dog, snake, a snail. It doesn't matter. You, this is, this is, you have this gift. And it was like, Holy cow, we're on live TV. <laughs> I was like, which, where do I hide? But right after she had said that, I don't know if I ever told you, um, Jackie Morse, who's an amazing individual, mm -hmm. she has beautiful photography on Facebook, if you could find her. And uh, she's a Reiki master or a Reiki master teacher. And I went to her house one day. She had called me and she said, I'm having a bunch of Reiki practitioners and masters over. We're all going to work on each other, which is so nice. It's such a treat for a Reiki practitioner to have others work on you because usually you're giving and you're giving right. and you, you, you really don't say, all right, I'm sitting, you do. So we were all giving to each other and I couldn't make it that day. So she said, okay, can you come such and such? And I said, yes. She said, it'll just be you and me and a friend of theirs from all the way upstate. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So before I left my house, for whatever reason, I put a few dog biscuits in the well, you know, between the two seats in the car. Why are you doing that? I don't know. Just do it. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered, oh, Jackie has this adorable little black dog. So I get to our house. There are no cars in the driveway. And I hear a dog barking. And then I'm thinking, her dog was old. The last time I saw it, there's no way this dog could still be around, but whatever. I have the cookies in my pocket, and I don't know where her husband is, and they had a guest, but no cars. So I go, and I knock on the door, and that scene from The Shining with Jack Nicholson when he puts his face halfway <laughs> through the door, Jackie had a face like that, and she said, how are you with big dogs? <laughs> and just the way she said it really took me back, and I said, well, it depends on, and then she opens the door. And there is this magnificent being there, an albino pity, an oh, albino pit bull. Yeah. He was gorgeous, but he was very intimidating because he had a house, a, a, a head like a house. <laughs> and so I just said hi, didn't make direct eye contact. And I'm like, is she kidding me? They have the same jaw pressure as my Akitas, 2,400 mm -hmm. pounds per square inch. 
And if he doesn't like me, he's going to let me know he doesn't like me. Yeah. So I come in and he was very insistent on staring at me, which was unsettling. Mm. So I sit down and the cushions were very, very low. So now I'm on one side of the living room. He's on the other. Jackie's in the kitchen or something and he's looking at me and intuitively, I don't remember if I said it in my mind or out loud. His name was Alti. Oh. I said, the way you're looking at me and your body language, you're making me very nervous and I don't want to be afraid of you. I'm not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. So here. And then it, it was, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm intense because I want to get your attention. And it was like, okay, you have my attention. And then his human father came in. Interesting person. Never saw him again and hope never to see him again. <laughs> Just very, very odd. He said that, I forget how old he said he was, and he said he never sleeps. Okay. That's impossible because you wouldn't be alive. But right. if that's your belief, <laughs> that's your belief. And I didn't know anything about his history, married, single, and I, I really didn't care to know. As you know, no one could compare with Scott, so, I mean, that, that's it. <laughs> and um, so I was the first to go on, on the massage table in the living room. He was at my head, Alti is over on my right side, and Jackie's at my feet. And I was wearing a piece um, of uh, sacred geometry. Okay. And something made me take it off and put it between my heart and my solar plexus, like right in here. And I'm fine, I'm lying down and take a deep breath and loving receiving Reiki. And the dog starts talking to me telepathically. Yeah. And it was one of the most heartbreaking stories I ever heard. He was showing me that he saw his human mother murdered. Oh gosh. Wow. And I... I, I just started crying and I said, excuse me, you have to stop, both of you. I said, this is what I'm seeing. Um, and I explained that he, he there were three, three people and he was frantic because he couldn't get to her to stop them. Mm. And so it calms down and he's saying, thank you for listening, listening, keep listening. And I keep listening, but I'm calm now and now I'm sick to my stomach. Yes, I'm smelling vomit and I have chills again. And it was just my first experience to channel like that. And he's showing me a red truck and he's showing me that someone threw up all over. Oh my gosh. So I said, we can't, I, it was time to come out, you know, just, just no more. And then the man tells me that his wife was murdered. Oh my gosh. Wherever it is, they lived upstate. And her, their history with Alte is a neighbor had pit bulls. He didn't care for them. He didn't get them shots. He really, they were out in the barns and, and the garages. And he, this man and his wife went there one day, and this little white puppy was almost frozen to the concrete floor. Oh, so she picked him up and put him in the pocket of her barn coat. He was newborn. And they bottle fed him, and, but he grew up. As, and as long as he could, in her, in her pocket, Aww. in a, you know, a baby pouch over her until he was able to like walk and manage. So he was so bonded to her right. and not being able to save her was destroying him. He needed somehow to tell someone. And this man valid everything that this beautiful beast told me. Oh my Red truck. It was probably the wife that threw up. And I said, and it's, it's two men and a woman. And he said, yes. It was two men and a woman that murdered her. Wow. So, so it was you, Lorraine, Lee, um, this amazing dog that all really show me, have, you know, for all of us, just have faith. Take your time. Listen to the messages. Listen to the people that really have your best interest at heart. Absolutely. You know, and no one had anything to gain from pushing me forward to do this. But I love doing it because no matter what we talk about, we could talk about our glasses of water. Someone that's watching is going to hear something they need to hear or know of someone that 
needs to hear mm -hmm. something that sure. we shared or whatever. Absolutely. So you went from working in the bank, mm -hmm. CPA, and now <laughs> let us know what you do that I love. <laughs> I get the biggest kick out of seeing your well, your face when I go to different <laughs> stores. My face is everywhere, but it's not on TV anymore. But <laughs> I do sell real estate in the state of New York. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's that's my latest. And it's, it's my latest love, really. Um, you know, you being in the service industry as well, you can relate to the reward, the rewards of just helping people. I was a licensed real estate agent, yeah. um, mid eighties. Mm -hmm. And I had so much fun. It got me through a very, very hard time in my life. Yeah. Um, the last house I sold was a um, government foreclosure on Dune Road. Oh, okay. Two houses west of where Neptune's was. Okay. I know An the area. Amazing house. And it was yeah. a quarter of a million dollars. And at that time, that was like a $5 million house. Yeah. Now it's probably a $10 million Oh, it's got to be amazing <laughs> because it had house, uh, bedrooms, a uh, stone fireplace right Beautiful. on the ocean. And then it had a, an enclosed breezeway to the, the guest house, which sat closer to Dune Road, that had all the bay views. Very nice. With decking all around. I loved showing that house. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely a great experience. And, and You meet such amazing you people. You do. There's a lot of people that I sold, you know, several years ago when I first started that, you know, still come to my house today as friends. We still talk on the phone. We keep in touch. You meet a lot of new people that, you know, they start off as your client, then they end up as your friends. As your friend, yeah. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a lot of twists and turns, as, as you can probably relate as well from doing it. It's not always what HGTV no. make it seem or Bravo makes it seem, you know, million dollar listing, all that. They show you the fun stuff. They don't show you, you know, boundary line agreements and survey issues and, and they, CO issues. They don't <laughs> show you the mental dysfunction of some people, <laughs> whether it's the person coming out to buy the house or the person mm -hmm. selling the property. And there's, we, I uh, had Rob Schumacher on a few times. We talked about scams and there, um, the most recent one, you were probably warned about it also is the land scam. Mm -hmm. Someone trying to sell you land that they don't own right. because land you don't need to bring to, to have the seller home. There's no home. You just yeah. go to the property. Yeah, so, and and even the smartest brokers that I know have been impacted by this, wow. some of them to the umph degree. Yeah, no, you, you really have to be careful, of course, but, um, you know, it, it's still a rewarding business to yes. be a part of because, oh, you know, as I said, there's a lot of twists and turns. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're at the closing table and, and the new homeowner gets their keys and, and they're so and happy, they're very happy. And then you kind of forget about everything that might have been, you know, a pain in the neck to get through. Right. It's, it's all the, the C of O. No, you didn't yeah. get this permit. <laughs> exactly. No, the, the pool is not heated. Yeah, all that. <laughs> all yeah. that kind of goes away and everybody's happy. Uh, yeah. At least that's the goal. Yeah. So, but it, it's a lot kind of like hosting a show as well because you have to put your own brand into it and you have to put your own spin on it and, and people have to like you, they have to trust you and that's how you really build the business. Right. Um, you know, you have to be, it's, a, it's not about the money because you don't start off like the TV shows show you, you know, million dollar houses and a $200,000 commission. It doesn't start out like that. No. It's, you're building a business from the ground up. You're representing yourself. You're the face of your own business because you do essentially work for yourself. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts, if you will. Yeah. But, and it is very exciting because you yeah. really don't know what the next moment's going to bring. Right. You don't know what so you're getting into. You get bring next. your in intuitive side into this? I do. Is it, um, can you match someone up to a seller, a seller to a prospective purchaser? I, I what I usually or is do. Is it more of an, or an energy of a certain home? How, do, how does it feel for you? For me, it's more after meeting the person first, either over the phone or in yeah. person and just kind of, you know, well, what's your wish list and, you know, what can you live without or what's your give yeah. and take? Because you're never going to find the perfect, perfect house. You know, there's always going to be one thing that you're either giving up or, or whatever. Um, it's really just talking to them and then I can kind of figure out, okay, well, just knowing the inventory, which is still very slim. It's still a, oh, yeah. a very crazy, crazy wild market. Things are still selling way over asking. Um, mm. It's insane still, but it's great for sellers. You know, they're still getting into those bidding wars. Yeah. I have a set of buyers right now, actually, that are, are having a tough time. And, and they're looking at some pretty substantial houses. Mm. Yeah. But 
Yeah, it's not easy. No, you it's know. not. But for me, having been in the business and having been an admin in the business mm -hmm. until recently, I, I get a kick out of watching the high-end shows on TV. Yeah. Because it's really, it's fantasy. It is. You know, it's it like is. Teresa Caputo, who I think is great fun. Mm -hmm. And she's really very good. But people have to realize you're watching her show. She didn't just walk into that bakery surprise. The camera crew is there and they're all set up, <laughs> you know, and people, you, you tend to get lost, I think, in that mm -hmm. moment and think that this is spontaneity. Yeah. And it really isn't. I'd love to have her on. I think she'd be great fun. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. She's got a big personality. Um, yeah. You know, I think you guys have a great conversation. Oh, we would have, have so much fun. Yeah. We'd have a lot would. of fun. And there's this other fellow that I told you, you really could be brothers. His name is Matt Frazier. Okay. And I don't know where he lives, but I know he's doing a lot of tours right now. And uh, he's been on a number of talk, sh talk shows and he'll just say, you know, there's, there's somebody here. And, and he's, of course, they're going to show the ones that he's right on. We all, mm -hmm. we don't get it all the time that this is true. And um, he... He's been wearing this jacket that I absolutely love. I have a, a winter duster. It's like this real snuggling material. It's oh, gray nice. and it has black crystal angel wings on the back. Beautiful. So you would love it. I, I probably would. Too. It's, just, it's awesome. Pyram we forgot a lot of our gear today. Yes, you know. <laughs> Pyramid Collection. That okay. catalog, take a look. They have it in gray and in burgundy. It's awesome. Beautiful. And he's wearing a creamy white sport jacket with the angel wings and gold in the front, which is, it just, it's not gaudy. You would imagine it's this gaudy, horrible thing, but it's so perfect for what he does, you know, and he is, he is definitely a character. You know, he is definitely a character. <laughs> well, those are the people that we always had on our shows, really. <laughs> always, always characters. What was your most extreme guest one way or in in any manner shape or form who is the most extreme or memorable is there any one or two um that well, jump out okay well i have a memorable and i have an extreme which one would you like first we have time let's do <laughs> <Okay>. both <laughs> um the most memorable one was uh, it was right before mother's day we we filmed it in april because you know like yourself we're like two weeks out from when you tape the yeah. show um so we did mother's day makeovers and it was Three moms, because our show was 30 minutes, so the most we could fit in was three moms. Right. Um, they came to the studio thinking that, you know, their family members who were bringing them to the show. Now, just so everybody understands how the system was back then for us on our show. Yeah. You know, you called or you wrote in, mm -hmm. um, either by email or we had a phone line, and, and then somebody would call you back, and, and we put up, like, the graphic or whatever you'd like to call it on a previous show. We had an show. entire staff. <laughs> this, yeah, it was, a, it was a village, as they yes. say. Yes. Um, so we put up the graphic months before for, you know, Mother's Day makeovers. Do you want to surprise your mom with the makeover? Call our show. So we got a lot of responses. We narrowed it down to three that had like the best stories. And, and I remember one, um, there was a mom who was recently divorced. It was a really tough time. Um, another one, uh, the mom was very sick with lupus mm. and, and something else I don't totally remember, but her daughter, I remember, wrote a beautiful story. And I was like, yes, that, that, that has to get in the pile. We need okay. her. Um, and then a third one, I don't, oh, it was friends, which we thought was fun. It mm. was two friends that were bringing a mom that they knew. Because okay. she, she worked for the gym and she was always in sweats and sneakers. And like, we would love to see her hair done and makeup and mm. let her go out and get a date. She's divorced. And it was actually a lot of fun. Yeah. So these women came to the show thinking they were just going to sit in our audience because we had an audience. Yes. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, they end up in the green room or, or backstage yeah, outside yes. the studio where they couldn't hear or see anything. And before they knew it, they were being called on to set. And that was the first time that they heard yeah. they were actually going to be on camera. So the, and that's on YouTube as well under my channel. So if you could find that show, their reactions when they sat down was exactly what it was. They had no idea that they were even going to be on TV. Yeah. So they were dressed how they were dressed. Yeah. Um, you know, previously the producers got all the, the sizes and, and what, 
clothes they wore. We had a brand new wardrobe waiting for them. We had Salon Expair from Waiting River who mm. came in and did their hair and their makeup. I mean, there was color. I think there's still some color stain on the carpet in that old <laughs> Probably. studio. Probably. Because we did it in like the green room area. So, you know, the, we did color and makeup and everything. And it was just such a fun show. And it made these women feel so good. So good. And they look so good. So, yeah. you know, I urge you to now find that show because I might watch it again myself. Yeah, it I'm definitely so going to look for it too. Um, the, the most extreme guests now, we, we did a show when um, people were really starting to realize that they were trans back then. You know, mm. this was 2012, 2013-ish. Um, yeah. And it wasn't totally heard of or spoken of as much. So we did have one guest that was a trans female. He was transitioning into male from female. Right. Had he been open about being transvestite prior to that? or? Well, his story, was, and it's Ryan Casada that's on there as well. Yeah. Um, now it's coming back to me as I jog my memory. Um, you know, born a female, always felt that she was a male and mm -hmm. had top surgery, as it was called, right. and took hormones and, and did whatever she had to do to become Ryan. Okay. Born Sarah, uh, but wonderful musician. So, you know, on top of, you know, just having that demon at the time, you know, because it wasn't spoken of, like I said, and I would imagine that it was tough for him to do this, to yeah. transition. Um, you know, also phenomenal musician who's still playing today, lives in California. You know, somebody else I keep in touch with. So, you know, yourself doing this, you meet so many people. Yes. Yeah. And thanks to social media, you're able to stay in contact with them. Yeah. So maybe that's not extreme, but it's definitely something that's, um, we didn't it's touch so, on a lot it's of it. It's so important. It is. Even it's more so, so today. Important. It's more common today yeah. um, than it was back, back then. When, when I was growing up, there was Christine Jorgensen, and there was a tennis player who transitioned from male to female. Christine Jorgensen had been a, a male doctor went to Sweden for the surgery. And so it was so few and, and far between and almost like um, a story from Hollywood, I guess. Yeah. You know, not real, but we don't, in our society, we're not tolerant of anyone that's not just like us. <laughs> you know, and when they say things like, where's your humanity? Humanity is, uh, no, it's not what you, what you would hope it would be. Right. There's no compassion. You know, not, I shouldn't say that, that there's no compassion. There's lack. There are, there's are. such a, a, a huge lack of compassion, of respect somebody else. They could be so different from you, mm -hmm. you know, with what's going on now in the Middle East. You know, I think about when my children were growing up and I was divorced and remarried. And so it was a mix of uh, a Jewish Greek Orthodox household. So that's, that's, there are some similarities, but it's also pretty extreme. Yeah. So with my five stepchildren, um, they didn't really know what to make of me. They had never met a Jewish person before. Now they had brothers that were Jewish. And now my sons had brothers and sisters who were Greek Orthodox. So I'm thinking, what a great learning experience yeah. for all of them. So everybody learned about everybody else's religious belief system. And they said, your faith is different, you know, trying to explain it to them on all the different age levels. And I said, it's really easy for us to get along because how I view it, having been brought up in a Jewish household, been baptized a Buddhist <laughs> a long time ago, 1970, I was baptized a Buddhist, followed Ekinkar. So um, I guess I take what resonates for me. And what I explained to them is there's this big wagon wheel. A big wheel with spokes and the hub is in the middle and we're all different you know each one of us is on a different spoke and your belief system you're all headed to the same mm -hmm. to god to buddha to allah to muhammad to sugmad you're all headed to the same higher enlightenment just because you do it a little differently than I do, you dress differently than I do. I don't cover my head. You cover your head. Um, just all these different things. You you don't eat pork. This one eats pork. Just all these different things. But take a look. There's so many similarities, even in the biblical stories. Yeah. So why why can't we get along? 
we're all we all want to head in the same direction. Sure. You know, and of course, there's radicals in every belief system. Like you don't believe like me, you, you shouldn't be on this earth. It's like I, no, 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 I, I, no, no, no. I, I, I can't, I can't process that. No. You know. Some of us are not made to 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 process that. And that's okay. Yeah, it really is. So there's something I want to talk about. We were going to have another guest here today. Uh, John, could you tell me a little about his candle business? Absolutely. The candles that we, you know, we can't sell anything, but right. so John went from a completely different vocation. <laughs> Much <in>, like myself. <laughs> right. So what did he start out doing? He was in hospitality at hotels. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll give you the, the background. Um, yeah. And you've met John a number of times. I adore him. From he's back he's my snuggle bunny. I'd actually met John, who's my fiance, by the way. We've been together 11 John, years now. Yeah. Um, you know, we're still not married, but, you know, we don't need the piece of paper. No, you to don't. Share and they have life. furry children that are we precious. <laughs> we have a lot, had a lot of furry children. Yeah. We have two more right now. Um, but I had met John shortly after my reboot show premiered in 2012, mm -hmm. literally like a month later. Like we were already on the air. I was doing the show. I, you know, I'd met him in a, in a nightclub. And, <laughs> and he became the director on the, the show because I met him. Director, yeah. Yes. And he did a great job for us for the for the next you know yeah. five years that we did the show. Um, and it was kind of, well, it was nice because it was still a new relationship. So, yeah. you know, you didn't mind waking up in the morning and having breakfast together and then going to work together, which was the show. And then you go home together. And then, right. It sounds like a lot. But it, it it wasn't bad back then. I don't know about eleven years now. But, <laughs> You're you know, so it's funny. A different. Um, but he's he's wonderful. But he too has a gift. He yes. was always very. Um, I don't know if intuitive would be the word, but he would get dreams. Like most of his third eye, as we would call it, yeah, would come to him in his sleep in the middle of the night. Um, he's had some shocking dreams. I he remember. has. Um, you know, if, if he ever comes back, he can certainly tell it better than I can. But yeah. basically, he has a gift for children that have passed many, many, many years ago. And, and we're talking, you know, he's had dreams from the 1600s and the 1700 time periods. Yeah. And they're local on Long Island. And we've gone to, no joke, we've gone to some of the cemeteries where he has seen in his dreams can't explain it again. As I said, right. it's, it's unexplainable, but we've showed up to old, old cemeteries and have found these graves of young children that died tragically. One had drowned. Mm. Uh, one was murdered by her mother. Another one, um, I don't remember how she passed away. It, it was, it was, she was very sick. They trust him to come through him. Yeah. But then he never sees them again after that. Yeah. They got their message through Yeah, and now they could be, be peaceful. Yeah. But it's very interesting that, you know, it's not adults who have passed away. It's, mm -hmm. you know, children. Because if you think about it, in, in so many generations, children are to be seen and not heard. Don't mm -hmm. listen. You're a child. You're either a child and you have nothing important to say or you're an old person and you also have nothing important to say. Yeah. You know, that's, right. you know this society is infamous for that. So what made him start with the candles? Uh, well, it was some health issues that he had the year before, and he wandered away. He just to, doesn't listen. He doesn't listen, you know, <laughs> typical man. Yeah. <laughs> you, yes. Um, He's so much fun to be with, he but is, he does yes. not listen. does not listen at all. Um, but, you know, just having some health issues and spending some time in the hospital, he wanted a way to relax and take it easy. So he started figuring out some hobbies. And candle making was something that it took him a couple of months to perfect, but I tell you, they are some of the best candles that I've ever had. You know, yeah. I burn them in our own house now. Um, and it's not so relaxing anymore. It's turned into a business. It's the JG right. Candle Company. And, um, you know, he does craft fairs. He's in four stores across Long Island right now. He does all the seasonal fairs and things like that. And he's... Isn't he's it amazing how himself. our lives have changed mm -hmm. and the things and we just keep blossoming over and over and over again our entire garage is a manufacturing <laughs> studio and office you know he's got a whole postage machine yeah. set up because he ships everywhere yeah that's the one nice thing about social media is that you know you can put you could do this everything you out can market. Yeah, yeah correct and and you have friends all over the place that see this so the word gets out okay so and yeah it's and when, when he business. comes on he'll have to have some candles out absolutely. here absolutely so, um, since you do beautiful design work, can we talk about that for a few minutes? Sure. We've got about nine and a half minutes oh, left. Wow, that went so let's, fast. let's talk about <laughs> your design because I love when you 
put pictures up of, of you. your home and other places that you do this with. I've always decorated. I've always loved decorating. I've always loved home, like the sense of home. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm a homebody because I do like to go out. You know, we, we, we love entertaining and going out to dinner and meeting up with friends. But, you know, the holidays are coming. And oh, I know your house is rocking. <laughs> I'm already, you know. Starting to get the things out of the attic, but it, it's an exciting time for me. I've always loved Christmas especially. Yeah. So I, I really do a lot for Christmas. We have about six trees throughout the house. And, mm -hmm. you know, we do a big, big party every year. There's at least 100 people in our house. Yeah. Um, you know, we've done it for the past few years post-COVID, and, and nobody's gotten COVID. You know, this nobody's ever called thing. and said, I got COVID. One so. year, I am finally going to make it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hopefully, it's this year. I hope so. But it's just so much fun. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun, and um, it was a lot of trial and error as well when I was younger. I've always had my own space, and I've always liked to design a space that I, I love coming home to. And yeah. It's your sanctuary. Your home is your sanctuary, so it should look a certain way. Yeah. Um, and just trial and error, just things that I liked and didn't like and zhuzhied around, as I like to say, mm -hmm. and tweak. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how it all started. And it's it's nice because it goes hand in hand with the real estate. People sometimes need staging or or some people don't have a vision. And that's okay. You know, we all have our thing. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that I can't. I can't drive a boat. I can't fly a plane. We have people that okay. can do that. So we all have our specialty. So mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to be able to assist in, in all areas. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. So now I'm really going to put you on the spot. Because <laughs> only because I love you. So as we, none of us stay the same. Do you have anything that you'd like to share in the last few minutes to anyone watching that is afraid to make a change in their life, that hesitates maybe to go to school or switch professions or take a job doing something they've never done before or to quit a job and go out on something, you know, of their own? Mm -hmm. What words would you, you know, from your own personal storehouse? Do it. <laughs> why not? That's right. Why not? Yeah, why not? Because um, if you do it or you don't do it, tomorrow is still, right. if, if you're meant to wake up tomorrow, you're still going to wake up. It took me a, a really good circle of friends, you know, much like yourselves and other people that I know that I surround myself with to realize you get one go around in this life. You know, we wake up every day. They say you only live once. Well, no, we live every day that we're alive, but you only get one turn on the earth. Yeah. Um, unless you're reincarnated. And, and that's a whole other story that, you know, we can talk about another time. Yeah. But whatever is floating in your mind, try it. Why not? You have nothing to lose. Yeah. You really don't. Yeah. And it's part, have fun on this journey. Yes. Whether you believe in reincarnation, as Jason said, or not, live in this moment, have fun, mm -hmm. you know, get outside, do something amazing. The last week I got news that someone that had been in my life a very long time had passed away. And I cried for a few minutes, you know, when I got the phone call. And then, you know, I thought about it. And then I went out on the back deck and the kids next door to me um, brought in six ducks that were born <laughs> on Mother's Day. And I, oh. I love these six characters. And they were so intuitive because I was talking to their human the other day and she said, they love you. They they come right up to you. So I'm on the deck and one is Quackers. She has a um, she's special needs. She has something wrong with the fluid in her brain. So she's she's wobbly and she's very verbal and she lets the others know when she needs her. And they all went around the pond and then they came up by the deck oh, and I had my iPad out and I was videotaping them and talking to them. And it's just so peaceful for me i don't believe that when you cross over that that's it i do believe there's more to the journey you're just not in this body anymore absolutely um because energy doesn't end energy is is just com complete always and that these beings pick up on the sensitivity because I'm out there and I have my iced tea and had a bottle of soap bubbles, which are <laughs> really relaxing. And I suggest everyone get soap bubbles. Keep them nearby. Keep a bottle in your car. Keep a bottle at home. Keep a bottle at work. And they decompress you. When you blow that and you see that beautiful little sphere with the translucent colors just floating around, mm -hmm. it's just okay. So now exhale. You know, just exhale. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. So, totally off topic. 
There are two amazing people in this town here, uh, East Hampton, Amy Zerner and Monty Farber, and I was blessed to have them on the show a while back. So because I fidget, I took a book off the shelf, and it's Monty and Amy's karmic birthday book. So There's I'm, a reason why you did that, right? There's a reason for everything. Oh, wait. So I'm not going <laughs> to read yours or me and, and <laughs> nail us, but I am going to read today. ta da ta da ta da I like that. Today is what, the 19th? Thanks. Yes. I believe so. October 19th. So let's see what October 19th is. Here we go. All right. This is an anonymous quote. As one person, you may not be able to change the whole world, but you could change the world of one person. Yes. Okay. The secret for today is people born today, I guess. Underneath your smiling nature, there is a real ability and a strength of character. Try to be less distracted and more serious in your work. Interesting stuff. Mm. And if you are born today, also born today is John Lithgow, um, John Le Carré, I hear I do that, right? <laughs> Evander Holyfield, and Trey Parker. Trey Parker is an actor, animator. The name is vaguely familiar, but I'm not linking up well, to that. Well, happy birthday to them. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. And the life path for people born today. You are sensitive and diffident and very considerate of others. It is your ambition to excel, and you would accomplish more if you were more assertive and aggressive. You are fond of beautiful and harmonious surroundings, love your home, and always strive to make it a nurturing, comfortable environment. Nice way to end And show. interesting that that's life path and, and that's so much of your core of what you do and what you love to bring to others. So um, how do people get in touch with you if they'd like, like to chat with you? Uh, well, I am all over the internet between my old my archive shows and, yeah. and my real estate, but my cell phone number is 631-835-9435. Uh, you can certainly call, text me. Um, and my email is pretty simple. It's jasongalka1 at gmail.com. So feel free, and any if, questions. And if you go into the grocery store, we went out to dinner a few weeks ago. <laughs> and the afternoon of going out to meet him and John for dinner, I go into the grocery store, grab a wagon, and there's <laughs> Jason's face looking at me. And like a lunatic, I'm talking to the wagon saying, I'll see you later, blah, 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 blah. I love it. But it's, it's so awesome to see that you're Thank doing you. this. And, and it takes courage to be out there. It does. It does. Um, and, and, and you know this, too, from doing it and what you're still doing, you know, 12 yeah. years now of your show. Yeah. You know, did you think, quick question before we do have to end, you know, yeah. did you think 12 years ago you'd still be doing this today in this beautiful studio? Mm -mm. Yeah. Nope. Definitely not. It's fascinating, right? It really is. And the people that I've had the blessing to interview just knocks me out. Mm-hmm. So I thank you. I thank you. I thank Lorraine. I thank Lee. I thank Janet. And I thank everyone that supports and watches the show. So now for the next few seconds, close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale peace, love, compassion. And exhale peace, love, and compassion. Inhale peace and bring it into your heart. And from your heart, let it flow out to every cell of your being. Today and every day, do kind actions, anonymous, beautiful actions. Tell someone they have a lovely smile. And please smile from your heart, smile from within. And again, I thank you all for watching the show. If you would like to be a guest, give me a holler. Thank you. And thank you so much, my thank precious you, my friend. friend. I love you. I love you Boy, too. Boy, have we thank been through you. some changes, yes. huh? <laughs>